الحمد لله نحمده ونستغفره ونستعينه ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا فيهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم ونفس المقصرة أولا بتقوى الله فاتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم أما بعد all praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. The best of his peace and blessings shall be bestowed upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon those that follow his footsteps. <coughs> Dear brothers and sisters, in our last khutbah, We touched on the concept of fitna, and it was intended to be a positive approach for us to, inshallah, be able to deal with the current challenges, protect, protect ourselves, protect our identity, protect our children. It is just natural for us as human beings, as parents, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, to protect the loved ones. This is our duty. <coughs> Protecting our deen is as important as protecting our lives. Some of us cross thousands of miles. We're blessed to live in a multicultural society that respects faith, <coughs> freedom of religion, because we wanted to protect our religion. We want to protect our faith. We also mentioned the ayah al karima where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that fitna to ashaddu min al qatl. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that fitna is worse than murder or death. And we said that the fitna. In simple terms, <clears throat> is a significant event that will force a person to re-evaluate and reconsider their belief, their religion, where the outcome will be religion or no religion. Should I remain? Or should I leave? At the end of that khutbah, I proposed steps and solutions. And I was told by some brothers that I, I was going a little fast. The time was a little 
tide. So I decided today, inshallah, to focus on those steps. <coughs> to make sure that we're all aware, at least, of what we need to do in such condition. Especially if we believe, and inshallah, I do believe that everybody sitting in this room and everybody that's going to be listening to us or listening to this khutbah is a person that cares about their deen, is a person that realizes that the most important thing in life is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else becomes simple. It was mentioned that the amount of events that are causing our young ones and even the adults to reevaluate the religion, they come from within the community and from outside the community. And they're growing by the minute. And we said, inshallah, there are four things that we need to do. We can do as individuals, and we can, and we have to do as a community. So if you can work at your individual capacity, Zakallah khair, la yikallifullah nafsan illa wusa'a. Do what you can do. If you have the capacity to work at the community level, do not hesitate. Work with your community. Work with the group. Work with your masjid. Work with your friends. We all have the capacity to work at some level of group arrangement, even if our social circle. Do not take this lightly. <coughs> Step number one. We said, we really need to redefine ourselves. In the time of confusion, a lot of people forget. We get busy. Who am I? Why am I doing this? Why am I waking up this early in the morning to do this or to do that? We start questioning everything. And because we're so occupied with this crazy life, of continuous running and running and running. Hard work, double shift. Need to put food on the table. Drives kids to school and activities. We get lost within ourselves. We forget who we are. And we forget our goal in life. So we need to redefine ourselves and remember what is it that we need to do. In the famous hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam annahu qal, Ughdu aliman, aw muta'alliman, aw mustami'an, aw muhibban. وَلَا تَكُونِ الْخَامِسَ فَتَهْلَكَ You need to be one of four. And those four categories, they fit everybody. No exemption. It's an advice from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your beloved al-Mustafa, to you and you and you and everybody. He is talking to you through his hadith, Salatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi. He is advising you something that we need the most is guidance and advice. He's telling you be one of five, one of four. Be a alim. Decide today, inshaAllah, walking out of this salah. And Allah will give you tawfiq and barakah. 
بيئة عالم if you can be a عالم we need علماء we are in dire need of علماء والله be a scholar or put your children on the path of becoming scholars real scholars real knowledge not part time scholars or amateur with all due respect to everybody that's working but we need scholars or mutaalliman or start learning or mustami'an or listen at least you don't have the capacity to become a alim or or learn listen focus take what's told you seriously if you hear something from a alim don't undermine it. Aw muhibban. The least you can be, I mean, we all can listen. Maybe not all of us can become an alim or a muta'allim, but we all can listen. We need to listen. And listening also meaning we need to search for the knowledge. Who are we going to listen to? Whatever you are. Join the halakha, come on, there's, there's a alim, come and sit, listen. If there's a YouTube video from a alim, listen. If someone is saying something and this person is credible, listen. Take it seriously. And the last one is muhib. Or at least, who's in muhib? The person who loves is the person who surrenders his heart and feelings. <coughs> the least you can do is to love. Love whom? Well, when asked about the fifth one, that's going to explain in Muhib, someone asked, and who's the fifth one? Because the hadith said, do not be the fifth one. Otherwise, the fifth one is the one that's going to suffer. If you're not one of the four, decided to be the fifth, may Allah protect all of us. The fifth one is going to suffer. Who's the fifth one? In a riwayah, al-mubtada. The person that innovates in his deen. What does that mean in our current time? The person who starts redesigning and altering his deen according to his hawa. Instead of listening or learning, they would say, yeah, you know what, it's a tough time now, maybe, you know what, hijab is not part of the deen. This is one of the biggest attacks we have out there on hijab. Mubtada. Many of them out there now. That even claim to be ulama, unfortunately. <clears throat> so you saw altering your deen and innovating things for your comfort. And I'm not talking about a situation of safety or life-threatening situation. I'm talking just comfort. In another riwayah, who is the fifth person that's going to suffer? Al-Mubghid. Al-Mubghid al-Ilm al-Ulama. The person who hates or loathes because it's bullshit, it's a higher degree than just kur. The one who hates al-ilm, al-ulama. Every time you say a alim, they have to put this alim down or that alim down and show this negative ill feelings towards al-ilm or ulama. Oh, they're all bad. They're all ulama sultan. That's not true. So you saw hating al ulama, al spreading this hatred for ulama al ulama to your children, to your circles. What happens if we start hating al ulama? Al we start hating our deen because our deen is al. It's a book of knowledge, and this al needs ulama. Scholars to come and study it and reflect upon it and transfer it. It's a trap if you start hating ilm al ulama, you start hating your deen without knowing. So if the fifth person
الكفر والعياذ بالله that's gonna suffer the one that hates العلم والعلماء so who's the محب explaining the fourth one المحب العلم والعلماء just logically so we need to love العلم والعلماء yes unfortunately there are bad examples there will always be bad examples but alhamdulillah rabbil alameen you were promised by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he left you ala al-mihajjati al-bayda laylihah kana hadi ala yazigu anha illa halik you promised that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had left us on a clear evident deen clear And I'm just talking about confusions. How is it clear? It's clear when you make the niyyah to look for it. Allah will make it clear to you. It's clear when your heart is clear and you're seeking the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it clear to you. Will guide you. If you seek guidance, you'll be guided. So when you find a alim, credible, and remember, مجتمعت أمتي على ضلالة, they will not be a alim. As Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the ummah will not join or agree on something haram. This is a blessing from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So if the ummah, the ulama, agree on a person that this person is good, rest assured that there is blessing from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And it's a testimony for that person. Love the علم والعلماء. Focus on علم والعلماء. Listen to the علم والعلماء. Why the علم? Why the علم? Because the biggest challenge right now is the confusion we're seeing in the علم itself. Meaning. A lot of people that claim things to be from Islam, وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ And it's not from Islam. A lot of practices, religions, claiming to be Islam. And it's not Islam. There are a lot of religions out there hyphenated something Muslim. It's not Islam. We say it and we say it strongly. So we need, who would know it's not Islam? Maybe you and I don't have the knowledge to distinguish. <coughs> what about our little kids? How would they know? How would they know if someone is telling them this is a hyphenated Muslim something? How would they know? If someone appears on TV called a leader of the Muslim community, and this person subscribes to this hyphenated Muslim group. How would they know? So, Al-Alim, or Al-Alim, Kun Alim, and the first one is the most important one because we need the Alim to tell us. And I'm calling upon all the ulama, especially the local ones. Stand up and say, this is not from the deen, and this is not from the deen. And they will not be speaking out of their hawa, because they have references. The alim, when they say something, they will immediately give you a dalil. A dalil. This is the evidence from the Holy Quran, and this is the evidence from the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The alim will not just speak out of hawa. It's easy to spot them. So we need those ulama. Step number one for us to face this challenge is we need those ulama to rise and start clearing and distinguishing between Islam and hyphenated Islam. We don't accept dashes. Anything that's hyphenated Islam is not Islam. And they say it themselves because they've hyphenated themselves. There's only one Islam, one Muslim. 
no sex, no divergence, no hyphenations. This is the most important message I have for you today. Keep that in mind. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts and our minds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts and our minds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salam ala Rasulullah. So this message and this call for the Council of Imams to inshallah establish the, maj the majlis of ulama. We respect our imams, the ones that lead the prayers. They're doing a great job, jazakumullah khair. And inshallah soon we should have majlis ulama. So they can start by clearing the path for us. We don't want any clouds. Step number two. When we all love the ilm al ulama, we will immediately attach to one another and join as a community. And we need to do something extremely important, which is stand up for your rights. Please. If your rights get violated, don't just be passive and say, Alhamdulillah, it was not as bad. <coughs> if it's not too bad now, it could get worse later. If it did not hurt you much now, it could hurt you more later. <coughs> if you don't stand up for your rights and demand your rights, your rights will be stripped away from you. You need to push back. You need to push back. A strong message from Surah Al-Baqarah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ لِلَّهِ You need to push back the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ So there will not be a fitna. Stand up and push back. If you see a hyphenated Islam, don't just say Well, they're doing a good job, so you know what? No! You need to push back. If you see Islam is being attacked, you need to push back. If your identity is being attacked, you need to push back. If it's your right being attacked, you need to push back. A brother told me yesterday, it was a very old incident, so I don't want to alarm you, but he was mistreated by a cop. And I have to say, this, our cops in Toronto or in the area, in Ontario, they have great manners. Yani wallahi. And I was surprised to hear that story. But it was an, an older story. Allah, Allah alam, what was the condition? But he was mistreated by a cop. Yelling at him and scared him and scared his kids in the vehicle. What did this brother do? He didn't just go home and say, Alhamdulillah, he didn't arrest me. Which a lot of people might do. A lot of people might think, well, alhamdulillah, he didn't, he didn't arrest me, so it's okay. No. He went and he complained. He complained. When he complained, the investigation started, unfortunately. They said, well, your word against his word. Nothing happened. But he was smart. He had his phone recording. And he recorded everything. And he presented his evidence. And then that cop was brought to a meeting, and I was told that he was crying out of fear because he was two years away from retirement, and this could have ruined his career and retirement. He started crying and begging for mercy. What did our brother do? He forgave him, and I'm proud of him. Someone would have said, No, we should have. Uh, press charges so nobody else would repeat this yeah it's true but also it was an isolated event it's nothing that we hear about every day alhamdulillah rabbil alameen so he forgave him and that person learned a big lesson but he stood up for himself if he had let it go this person would have repeated it again and again and again whenever you are requested to stand up and push back 
even if it's as simple as sign a petition, send an email, stick with the group, whatever needs to be done, it's for you, for you and for your children. Don't be passive, please. I know I've said this several times on this blessed mumbo, but I say it again and again and again. Might be the last time I say it for a while. But I urge you to please remember it, defend your rights, stand up for your rights. Because if one of us stand up for their rights, they will stand up for everybody and get the edge for everybody. Let that person be you. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَلَوْلَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ لَهُدِّمَتْ, لهدمت صَوَامِرُ وَبِيَعٌ وَصَلَوَاتٌ وَمَسَاجِدُ يُذْكَرُ فِيهَا اسْمُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا if we don't stand up and push, it's a pushback. And look at the expression. People push each other and you push back. We're talking about fights and violence. Nobody can, inshallah, misinterpret what I'm saying. It's a pushback. Someone is pushing you, you push back with the right means. Legal means, law and order. We live in a land of law and order. Your voice is important, your vote is important, exercise it. This is your push back. And if you don't do, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in that ayah, temples, masajid, places of worship could be destroyed. Meaning religions will be attacked. Which is the first thing we see when people do not push back. So let's stand up and push back and fight for our rights. And I also, in the third point, I want to say, again, let's not waste our time in fixing what's broken. We've been trying to do a lot of things in this community and it hasn't been working. Let's not get bogged down by it. Oh, the community is not getting together. Oh, the community is not uniting. There's time to change strategy. It's time to focus on raising something new. And as we said, if you have a piece of equipment that you've been trying to fix for a long time and it's not fi being fixed, now just throw it in the garbage and buy a new one. With all due respect, don't mean to use that word to describe anybody or any group with this, but what I mean is, it's time to do something new, and this something new is focus on raising the new generation of leaders, or not just the young ones. Wallahi, amongst us there are a lot, a lot of leaders, but you're busy doing something else. We need you. Your community needs you. A lot of you are really good in project management and project Leadership and, and, and come back and plan for your community. Your community needs you. Plan for our growth and our success. Don't just plan for the growth and success of business and dollar signs. Plan for the growth and success of your community. For our safety, for our prosperity, for our security, for our advancement. I call upon everybody that has the ability to do it. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, step up and step forward and lead. We need leaders. Treat your community as one of your critical projects. And yes, there is a deadline. This project has a deadline. And if we pass the deadline, it's not going to be good for any of us. Step up. Lead the community. Treat it as a critical project. And let's hold each other's hands to the shores of safety and success and growth and prosperity. Let's do it. Let's do it sooner or later. Because this is the command of Rasulullah to all of us.
And this is what he would love to see us do when we work together. And remember that Ya Allah will bless us and will take us all to safety and success and prosperity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and protect us all. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts and our minds. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his love and love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the love of our brothers and sisters in our community. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our children and all the weak ones across the globe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and shower us with his mercy. اللهم نسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم عافنا في ديننا اللهم عافنا في دنيانا اللهم عافنا يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظنا من بين أيدينا ومن فوقنا ومن تحتنا وعن يميننا وشمائننا ونعوذ بعظمتك أن نغتال من تحتنا اللهم احفظنا وثبت علينا ديننا يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظ لنا ديننا يا الله واحفظ أبناءنا من كل الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم احفظنا من كل الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن إنك على كل شيء قدير إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبر يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واستغفروا يغفر لكم والله يعلم ما تصنعون والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأنت يا أخي أقم الصلاة